Um, this is called the nun and the greyhound. Um, now, the, the nun and nuns and greyhounds were two uh, very, you know, um, common figures in my childhood. Everyone seemed to have a nun in the family, and there were lots of greyhounds. And uh, my family had a couple of nuns, and there were two, I had two and nuns. And my father, who was uh, was a man of hobbies, he took up hobbies, and for a while he had um, greyhounds. Um, one of the greyhounds ended up, for some reason, kind of in retirement, living in the back, but it was never somehow taken into the house as a pet. Maybe it was too big or anyway. So it lived a lonely life in, you know, in the shed at the back of the house. And around the same time, I suppose in those years, I, my aunt, Nan, who was, also, who was also retired, used to come and visit. And she had been a very severe figure of my childhood, but by now she was a, a more benign figure. And for some reason, the two of them seemed to go together. A nun and a greyhound would come to the door, one to the hall, one to the back, lean, ardent, lonely, and sad. Both in retirement, the nun and the hound, she from the classroom, he from the track. One found it hard to talk, the other never barked. Though once there were boss, in convent and kennel, bursar and winner, flying down the corridor or up the field, alarming the children, lithe, forbidding, and cross. That we brought out the good purcellain meant nothing to the nun. The dog ignored the bone. All they wanted now, the position of household pet, this mute longing impossibly greater than tea or a timid embrace. Too late they came to the door, the greyhound and the nun. Too late to be consoled, to be taken in.